Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 282, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And we have another wonderful show here. I know a couple weeks ago I said that we were going to be going back to Ghostbusters for, to uh, wrap up the rest of the franchise, but um, Lotus uh, hadn't hadn't uh, seen um, the, the last two films, so... Uh, would have been very one-sided, and uh, I've seen parts of the 2016 one, not very good. I do not have the only opinion of that, um, but um, basically, a long and short of it is that it, it it tried way too hard and was basically a remake, uh, so it um, kind of fell on its face because of that. Um, but uh, I did see the newest one, and I did like that. Um, but it is very kind of similar to, uh, The Force Awakens in a lot of ways. Like, it's like, it's also a remake, but, like, it, it has more to it than that. Um, so I, I like that part of it. And I like that it's outside of the, the city, um, uh, and it's with a new generation, but it also has its, you know... Corny moments and also, um, you know, recreations of dead people, which I don't agree with. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's what I heard about, like, the, the, the callbacks to nostalgia and something like that, which was supposed to be a tribute, but it comes off to me as cynical. It's just yeah. gross. I mean, uh, we can s- uh, forgive it a little bit because the people involved were his actual friends. Um, so, I mean, like Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray are genuine friends of, um, you know, uh, Harold, Harold Ramis. So, um, you know, I can forgive it a little bit for that because they, they were involved in the production of it. Um, also, you know, the director is the son of the original director of the Ghostbusters movie. So, uh, you know, I, I can, I can excuse it a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit better than, you know, Disney recreating dead people uh, yeah. with no love in it. Um, but, uh, I, there's some heart to the new, the new movie, so, um, it's called Afterlife, and, and that's actually a good title, but, uh, yeah, it, 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 there's, I wish it did more on its own, uh, I did not need, a, you know, the same bad guy, um, well, that, that's <laughs> as the that first movie. That's crazy, is, like, yeah. people got on Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters 2, yeah, there's still an S, Ghostbusters 2's case, for being a very redundant movie, but, like, we're really doing Marshmallow Man and Zool and Gozer again. Fucking really. <laughs> I mean... Inc- that's almost literally incredible. The The best part of the movie is when they fought an original ghost, um, which like, was the best part. Yeah. Remember that time there was a cartoon series where every single episode you never knew what you were going to encounter, and it wasn't fucking Zool and Gozer... Every I mean, time, <laughs> with ghosts, you could do a lot um, because you could like, do anything. Like what a- the exactly, hell? <laughs> you you could fight. You could literally fight the ghost of any notorious person in history. Uh, you can make up a person. Uh, you can have demons. Uh, you can do anything. Um, r- really, uh, and like you can fight Hitler. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't expect the Ghostbusters to go there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, but I mean. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, but it kind of would. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting the ghost of Hitler. Oh my god! <laughs> He's trying to bring all the Jews back to life. <laughs> he doesn't want him in afterlife. Exactly. What a concept! <laughs> Do we let him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Seinfeld. Yeah, just right a there. bunch of like 1930s and 40s Jews are just back and like, what is happening? <laughs> Why is everything electronic? Oh god, I'm sorry about that, but that that was that was good. <laughs> Do we let them? <laughs> but anyway, uh, speaking of Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah. I would so, bring up the holidays, but Hanukkah was in like November this yeah, year. Yeah, like uh, I I don't get the the lunar calendar, but um, you yeah. you you need to celebrate on the twenty fifth of Kislev, Vice. If that's a problem <laughs> for you, then 
that's just a shame. <laughs> well, we we should first uh, like you know you know ask you at, at least how was your Hanukkah this year? Uh, was it was it halfway I mean, decent? Whatever it was fine. Yeah. We had my brother and sister in law over for a night. Go, hooray! At dinner, you had one crazy night. <laughs> Precisely one crazy, <laughs> night. one pretty down to earth sober night. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, well, um, so so Christmas is greatly um, uh, something that I'm I'm looking forward to this year. Um, just on top of everything that's been happening over the last couple of years, I mean, for everyone, um, I mean, uh, there is another wave of the pandemic on on our doorstep as well. So I, I, I'm really hoping it's not as bad as things were. Um, but I'm, I'm more looking forward to seeing more of my family than I did last year. Let's just put it that way. Um, and uh, I, I had a particularly tough year. I, I, I just lost one of my friends, um, my, my next door neighbor. Um, Oof, sorry so, to hear. like, yeah, he, he's a person, uh, like... Like three days before he died, he came over my house and, like, we hung out. Like, he was a good friend, you know. Like, somebody I saw frequently. Um, and he was only like he was only thirty two years old. So, um, this is gonna be a time that we can um, remember him by and also heal, try to heal from the the hurt of losing him, uh, in a in a very untimely fashion. So, um, I I. I I wanted to, we wanted to take this opportunity to talk about like you know our favorite Christmas media and that kind of thing because we we want people to uh, be able to enjoy this holiday and hopefully it it'll be better for some of you. Um, I, I know people have lo- have lost people as well. I'm not the only one uh, over the last couple of years. so um, hopefully this can be a time of joy for people and uh, a time to um, you know, reflect on the year as well as the as the year ends, uh, if you do not celebrate, um, you know, Christmas in particular. But um, the the good thing is that there's a lot of traditions, um, um, like m- media transi- uh, traditions uh, surrounding Christmas that kind of, everybody kind of gets wrapped up in, um, you know, just because the, a lot of them are pretty fun. Um uh, so we we just wanted to go over some some of our favorite ones. Uh, Lotus, did you have any in mind when you when you came up with this idea? Uh, I was thinking kind of games. Uh, although there are movies, I don't really watch that many Christmas movies. Although I've seen a few. I mean, I like a Christmas. You're a big story, Home Alone fun. fan. Hmm? You're a big Home Alone fan. Yeah, Home Alone one and two are fun. I haven't seen them in a long time, but I like those movies. And, and like I said, a Christmas story is pretty fun. Hmm. Um. I mean, as far as games go, there are games that revolve around Christmas. Uh, I, for the most part, haven't really played any of those. Maybe, like, one or two. But I I noticed even you put on the list. There's Shenmue, which goes through (laughs) Christmas. And similarly, uh, Yakuza is usually (laughs) around Christmas time. I don't don't know if, like, a dragon was, actually. Well, no, they, they, they did the New Year. Um, but a lot of Yakuza games are just incidentally around Christmas, even though, like, that never factors into the plot. Um, but it's just late December. On, and on it's Shenmue, also Parasite it, Eve. The whole reason the mitochondrial Eve was named that was because I think it was created on Christmas Eve. So Parasite Eve is on December 24th. Yeah, on, uh, and Shenmue in particular, like, um, once you hit the 25th of, uh, December, you can, um... You can encounter uh, Santa walking around. Uh, yeah, there's a guy town. just Santa just walking yeah. around. It's great. And he just says hello. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just some guy. It's great. <laughs> He's just like a normal NPC. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I um, uh, there are a a a few. Um. Actually, Sega probably um has the most to do with Christmas, which is kind of funny. Um. They they also have uh, a a. Uh, Christmas Nights into Dreams. Yeah, Christmas version of Nights into Dreams, yep. Yeah, so that that's more of a demo than anything. It's like a single level, but um it it uh it comes in like uh, you know, it, as, as a demo, but like the there are it, it it it's focus is of course on Christmas. So like um if you play it on Christmas Day, the level will be Christmas themed. Sure. Um 
which is pretty cool, but it will also change uh, according to other holidays as well. Um, in particular, Halloween, I believe. Uh, Actually, there's... speaking of which, you know what else does that, which I really don't think you're going to see coming? No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the brand new, well, brand new-ish, a couple years old, Souls-like game Mortal Shell. Really? A couple uh, that... of generic mooks have, like, vaguely Halloween-themed, like, creepy pumpkin, like, masks and, like, vaguely Christmas-themed, like, red and white, like, hats if you catch them on the right days. Uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but they are giving that away for free on PS Plus this month. So I Yeah, it's it a up. great game. Um, yeah. if, you know, if you know precisely what you're doing, you can beat that game in a few hours, but it'll take you longer than that because you got to get used to it. It's, it's a good title, though. Yeah. Well, in, in Christmas Nights, um, uh, the... Uh, there is Jingle Bell, uh, uh, like Jingle Bells playing. Um, there's also um, a other changes on New Year's Day and, and on April Fool's Day as well. So, oh, huh. which is pretty cool. Is April um, Fool's like it just doesn't let you play? Like, just kidding. <laughs> no, it lets you play as Riella. Um, so uh, wow. that's that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, that's actually pretty cool. It was originally on the Saturn, so it, like, interacted with your, your Saturn time clock if you yeah, happen yeah. to have a battery that worked. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, that battery ran out constantly. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, that's pretty neat. Um, but there, there are um, not too, too many actual, like, there, there are games that have, like, events that happen during Christmas. Like, um, like they're Elite B Agents, one of the more memorable um, songs that you play is uh, You're the Inspiration by Chicago uh, for a Christmas-themed uh, um, uh, stage. And it is, like, heart-wrenching. It, it's, it's about a, uh, a girl, like, um, missing her dad. And her, her dad's, like spirit is coming to comfort her um like on christmas day so um like af after passing away uh so that is like a really interesting one i definitely recommend if you um you know pick up the old ds game elite b agents it, that game is really fun and uh was very underrated um we also have uh death smiles 2 which we talked about in uh reactive consciousness that's yep. a uh christmas themed shmup uh there are really aren't many of those uh, so that that's pretty cool. Oh, actually, you know what one of my favorite little bits is? This actually made me laugh out loud when I first played it. Uh, I don't believe you got this far because there's a major gatekeeping point in this game, but uh, did you know that there's a Christmas section of Resonance of Fate? I did not know that. It is a riot because you know how like throughout the game, what you're doing is just what you're being hired to do? So, like, whenever you advance in the game, it's sure. just your new mission from whoever your commissioner is. Uh, the the last the last mission that I ever tried and I I gave up well, on move was... the idol. Yeah, the, the move yeah, the that's idol. what I'm talking yeah. about. That's horseshit. Yeah. But um, the Christmas themed area, it, I don't think they use the na the name Christmas, but it obviously is. But like, it's so funny because you're supposed to deliver presents to a bunch of little kids, but it still plays out like like a regular battle which is very funny so like oh. you're wearing like <laughs> you're, are uh, you throwing like um like like snowballs or something you're on the right track um oh, okay. like two of you are dressed like one of you is dressed up as an elf and the other a reindeer i think and the girl is dressed <laughs> up as like the the santa but, nolan like, it, north is one of the characters isn't he? <laughs> yeah he's the main protagonist <laughs> that's but awesome it's so and he's a straight man in that game, by the way. Like, I know he's known for being Nathan Drake in Deadpool, where he's wacky, but he's pretty sober in Resonance of Fate. Sure. But it, it is so funny, because it plays out like like a battle, where the little kids are the enemies, but if they, if they like, grab you, they just kind of, like, prevent you from doing things. They're not actually, like, fighting you. So you gotta, like, switch to a different character, because the whole gimmick with that game is the three-player system. Um, but what's funny is that you have presents and you're supposed to deliver to them, so you have to, like, target the kid and you throw the presents like you would a grenade, except that when it hits, the kid just catches it and is happy. It's, like, what's really funny is that the girl's, like, in it to win it, but when you play as Nolan North's character, whenever he, like, gives a present to a kid, he's just like, I think, oh, yeah, they do say Christmas out loud. Whenever you give the uh, a present to a kid, he's just like, 
Merry Christmas. Like, he's obviously just <laughs> in this for a job. He's not passionate about it at all. And the girl is, and Zephyr, like, the, the, the young guy is kind of into it. He's like, I'll, I'll do it. And Foster is just like, uh, I'm getting paid to say Merry Christmas. I'll say Merry Christmas. It's very funny. <laughs> like, if for I some reason that. I ever play that game again, if I ever get it on PS4 or whatever, uh, I'm going to need to make a point to record that one part because it's very funny. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I I know that there is a particular point in Secret of Mana where you have to basically save Santa Claus. Um, wow. Like, Father Christmas. It's like a major part of the game. <laughs> um, Actually, um, there's a Christmas section of uh, Cross Code as well. I forgot what the gimmick was. I, th- I think you get, like, his outfit or whatever. I forgot if it was a visual thing or if it was just a stat modifier thing, but, like, that was something that could happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, apparently, uh, there's, there's like a Christmas thing in Yakuza 5, but, uh, you'd be more privy to it than I would. Well, you're um, always around during Christmas. Yeah. Although I will say in Yakuza 5, there's a, a snow sculpture contest going on. So there's a bunch of just stuff like that, including Hatsune Miku. There's a snow sculpture of Hatsune Miku <laughs> in Yakuza 5. <laughs> um, oh, actually, um, this is not necessarily Christmas related, but... Oh no! This is terrible. What's the, Saijima? The Saijima, the, the 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 heavy in that game. Sure. Uh, he has, uh, like like people have sometimes unique heat actions based on their fighting styles. He has a move where you just like, when you're in a snow area, you just like roll the guy up in snow until he just becomes a snowman, mm-hmm. and that's that's like a kill. He's just a snowman now. But what's <laughs> what's really funny, and darker than I think was intended, is that. When you do that to a guy and kill him, he becomes, like, an object. So you could just, like, pick up a snowball from the snowman, like, the head or the body or whatever, and fight with it. But, like, are you just, like, like taking off the guy's upper half or, or what? What the Because, f- like, I-, I was fighting, like, a couple of goons. I put this up on video. I did the snowman move, and then one of his buddies immediately just takes the snowball, like, tink, and just gets ready to fight me. I'm like, did he just murder that man? <laughs> oh, God. Um... <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, I, that, that's really funny. I, I and you, uh, you like shove the the carrot nose into him. It's like a dong. Finish it. <laughs> it's it's great. That's amazing. Um, I mean, there's there's not much else. I mean, there the like there's there's things that have like sleigh bells and things like that. I mean, well, like, well the, yeah. there is that um there there is that that Grinch game on PS One. Oh yeah, where it's like it's inspired the by Grinch. the Jim Carrey movie, where you're just an asshole fucking up Whoville. Yeah, I mean, there's Home Alone video games. Um, almost all of them are really terrible. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and surprisingly, considering the movies, really not Christmas themed at all. Um, the Genesis one is okay. Yeah, well, I remember Question seeing the mark. video game nerd episode where he had Macaulay Culkin on, and they acknowledged that the Genesis one is like as good as this can get. <laughs> yeah, because it has like a crafting system, like way before there were crafting systems in yeah, video games, games generally just janky poor platformers yeah exactly um yeah i remember how angry i used to get those games when i was a kid because i was like this isn't fun at all um well, did, did you see that nerd video by the way <laughs> oh yeah no it was fantastic yeah, that that ending bit slayed me where where james ralph was like these games are horrible like they, they ruined my childhood and macaulay culkin's like uh, your childhood <laughs> it's like oh that's a very good point <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, I love Macaulay Culkin. I think he's he's really amazing, especially um, recently. But um, yeah, I mean, um, it, it, I'm I'm more in it now. Like there, the, like f- for the things that I want to see. Um, oh, we forgot to talk about Snatcher. Uh, there's there's a brief, oh you're right. Um, there's a brief uh, Christmas time during during that. Yeah, you you to get Napoleon dressed up as uh, Santa, yeah. <laughs> and he's constantly sneezing through the snow. <laughs> it's snow nine, isn't it? Um, um I, I, no, this the, it was just snowing outside. Oh, okay. There you go. Snow, snow nine, I think, wasn't that like indicative of Snatchers being around or something? Correct. But yeah, yeah, this was just when you're out in the city. Yeah. And you have that like Sega CD do, like do 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 Yeah, it's pretty catchy. Uh I have that on vinyl, that song, by the way. Snatcher soundtrack is great. And what's what's also great is that depending on the system it's on, I mean it's not a different soundtrack, they're the same melodies, but they play very differently. 
<laughs> you should hear well, how like the Sega CD version is by far the most video gamey sounding of the soundtracks. The MSX version is straight up moody. That's awesome. Oh, oh, did we we forgot about Elf Bowling? Yeah, how sports. could we forget Elf Bowling? <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, I, I know what, of Elf it. Bowling? Okay, so back in like 1999, like the old school. Uh, this is like you know the the dinosaur age by this point. Um, but um, my brother, uh, I was in middle school. Yeah, that that sounds right. Eighth grade. <laughs> um, my my brother came home from college. W- with you know his computer with all this stuff that he downloaded on it so it was pretty exciting because we really didn't have much internet you know at the time um so um we we had dial up so he like he he brought all the stuff that you know he had gotten off of the like the T1 lines back back in college you know when when uh it was hard to get like uh broadband internet and um he one of the things he had was elf bowling because it, this was like a viral thing everybody everybody yeah, had yep. it um and uh so it was like a flash game you just you know cute little game where you where you're santa and for some reason are are hitting elves th- that are the pins um, yeah, it's like what? What is this? <laughs> and it was like extremely hard to get a a, a, a three hundred, or maybe not even possible because they would cheat. Um, they would like move out of the way. Yeah. Um, so like you could you could bowl a perfect game, and it, it through RNG it would uh, um, like you know fool you. But uh, they they later re- um, a lot of people thought that it was a virus because a lot of people had like sent it all over the internet. Yeah. Um, so, it was, and it was during that time where like viruses were very prevalent and would screw up your computer very badly. Um, like nowadays, we have very sophisticated um, virus scans. So, like, I I don't know about you, but I I hardly ever have any issues at all with anything yeah, not, like that. Yeah, with anymore. that kind of thing. It's been um, a long time since I've had anything. Well, also like we go to a lot less websites now. Um, like. That is true. Like the internet's as big as it ever was, and in fact, bigger. But like, you only go to the same like three places you repeatedly go to. You're not just like experimenting all the time. Yeah, and like we used to like on every little subject, you used to have to find like the three people that had a website about it, right? Yeah. Now you just go to like whatever social media you go to. Uh, You might Google something. That's as risky as it gets when you click on whatever you're googling. And even then, half the time, if you click something bad, it'll be like, um, maybe you shouldn't go here. And you're like, okay, so you go back. (laughs) Like you go to like your favorite retailers, and you go to like Wikipedia. Um, yeah, like, IMDb. Yeah, there's the main places that you would go to, and those places are secure. Like again, it's only if you really start experimenting, or like if you're looking for something really esoteric that you uh, might encounter trouble. And and keep in mind also, this was during the high time in which people were um, were using uh, file sharing services like Napster. Um, yeah. that, that 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 was actually the beginning of it. So it was Napster. Yeah, it was like um, unregulated. That was the whole thing. Yeah, I mean. Mm there there is that kind of thing still right now you know there's the people that stay up on the torrents but i i mean people did it more than less less because they they couldn't afford things but more because of availability yeah like this is a thing that i now realize i can do but now that that kind of thing like we're used to it and we're also aware of how risky it can be it's more like like it last resort than first buy it resort. legitimate yeah buy it buy it you can buy it legitimately that, that's ahead. the thing like yeah. torrents were for the stuff that you like couldn't get and now most things you can get yeah mo- most things are available right now and it, it's the barrier to entry is not very high either um like a, a digital copy of a, like any movie you want like any movie like um you, you can pretty much find a digital copy of it for like five bucks yeah um, like it's only like weird vhs stuff that like yeah. unless you have a very specific childhood memory like you're not gonna care <laughs> yeah I, I i i i've shown you this before um like i had this movie that i i watched with my mom on like the sci-fi channel um like way back in the day and we we just laughed so hard at it oh uh, you know i was there when you look for it and you're like oh there it is um like <laughs> I, I, for the longest time, I was looking for a DVD of the movie Mosquito, um, and where, like, giant mosquitoes attacked, like, a park, um, full of people, and, like, the guy from, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was in there, um, but, like, um, 
I, for the longest time, I could not, like, it was on a very rare DVD. All of a sudden, you could just buy it on Amazon for, like, five bucks. It's just, yeah, like, 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 this like, movie I've been searching for forever. I could just have easy access to it. It's ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, w- so, during this time, like, you, like hearing that anything was a virus, you immediately get, get rid of it. Like, because anything could be a virus, too. Um, yep. So... Um, pe- we, we just cleared it off our computer, but it turns out it wasn't. It's just a, something that people were afraid of. Yeah. Then, um, they, 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 they ported it to, uh, the DS, uh, with a, a, like, a minor sequel attached to it. And, um, I can't believe they charged people for that because yeah. it was a free, very simplistic bowling game, um, that they, they charged good money for. Um, so, like, I, I, I will say this, that most of the days now uh, that you see a a Christmas-themed video game, it's for something like a, a quick cash grab to sell to anybody, like, on their Switch, on the eShop for, like, you know, a yep. dollar or two, and then that's it. Um, so, like, uh, and usually they're really crappy. Really yeah, they're crappy often, like, like, like a little flash style games like i came up with the thing where you're santa okay <laughs> exactly something a little kid might might you know pick up if they were excited about you know christmas morning picking up their switch you know that kind of thing um but i i did want to mention some other um christmas themed uh, media uh while we were at it um so have you ever heard about hero bear and the kid nope Okay, so um, back in the early 2000s, maybe a little bit later than, um, you know, Elf Bowling, but um, uh, there was a um, comic book creator who put out an independent comic book uh, called, uh, uh, I think his name is Mike Kunkel. Yeah, Mike Kunkel put out a really, really charming comic book. It was like four four issues initially uh, that they collected into a trade paperback about a kid and his um, stuffed polar bear who who was also a superhero to him. It was very uh, Calvin and Hobbes-esque. Sure. Um, and it, it's like the only thing that I've ever read that feels like Calvin and Hobbes but still maintains its own identity but still has that feeling. Um, and I, I really loved it for that. And uh, it, he receives the bear at Christmas time. And there it, are other things christmas things involved but um i i i can't talk about them because it's kind of part of it um but it's really amazing i i really recommend it as an all ages comic book um it's still really fun as an adult i really enjoyed it so the the polar bear is like basically like his like best friend and he he's his sidekick basically you know um which is really fun uh and also, there is Donald Duck's Christmas on Bear Mountain. Have you ever heard of this? Nope. So, um, this is by Carl Barks, the legendary uh, Uncle Scrooge um, like comic book author, like from back in the day. Um, so, back back in the day, um, like Disney uh, had comics that they put out, and um, like the um, like, the ones that were the most popular were actually the Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge comics. And before anybody got any credit, um, for being the author of these, because Disney, like, actually did not give credit to the author of these things, um, like, people would notice when the art was better, um, and the stories were better, and it was by this one guy, so they, they were like, it, it's the good duck artist, and eventually, um, they they started giving him credit, and his name is Carl Barks, and he basically laid the foundation for everything that you know as Ducktales. Um, so like uh, all the like M- Uncle Scrooge and all the like the world um, like uh, the globe globe trotting kind of stuff going around the world, treasure hunting, uh, the Beagley Boys, the um, like, U- Uncle Scrooge as a character, like, he, he did not come up with Uncle Scrooge, but he certainly gave him his personality. Sure. Uh, and his lucky dime and all that kind of stuff. All the things that, like, Uncle Scrooge is known for are because of Carl Barks, like, hopping oh, do, in, do you know in, the, in the money vault. Lu- 
do you know the story behind his lucky dime by the way it's the first dime that he ever earned um when he started working okay oh you know what you know what it was I, i was confusing it i think with what led him to be constantly shrewd and observant uh which was a different coin where uh he he did a job in scotland and then he got paid with like maybe it was a quarter like american currency Mm -hmm. which was useless over there and he's like this is never gonna happen to me again and that's why he's so like hardcore all the time (laughs) it's also a very old stereotype um (laughs) uh i i i this is like uh, like people don't really say this anymore but like it used to be like a a stereotype that scottish people were very cheap um Mm. so but yeah um it's just like one of those things but um it um there these stories are extremely charming um and uh they started putting out these fantagraphics uh collections with like um you know the donald duck and uncle scrooge comics in them and the earliest um, they 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 haven't released all of them, and they've released them outside of chronological order, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but like they they start the earliest one that they've released is uh, Christmas on Bear Mountain, which is as old as you can get right now. Um, like there are uh, four more volumes before that supposedly, but they haven't released them yet. Um, but I I just found that pretty interesting. Um, you can get them in the, like a Christmas box set. Uh, there's another Christmas um, themed volume uh, later on in Donald Duck's uh, like repertoire from Carl Barks, um, and then you have uh, Don Rosa, who was the guy who who was his successor after that. So um, they they have. Um, I just wanted to mention that because it's fun reading around this time of year. Um, and then let's see. I mean, other oh. I wanted to mention The Christmas Tree by John Roberts. Do you know who John Roberts is? Nope. So, um, he is the voice of Linda Belcher on Bob's Burgers. Oh, haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Bob's Burgers is a really great TV show. It's really funny. Um, it's like, um, it, I, I really enjoy it. The main character is done by H. John Benjamin, who you, I'm yeah. sure you've, you've heard him many, well, yeah, him he's as many Archer. characters. Yeah. He's Ar- Archer. He was also um, Coach McGurk in uh, Home Movies. That's right. That's right. He was also uh, the the son in um, Doctor Katz. Like he he's he's been a, a lot a lot of characters. He's also like the spokesperson for Arby's. <laughs> like um, he's he's been been around. Let's just put it that way. So, but Bob's Burgers is great. But Linda Belcher is a beloved character, voiced by a man, uh, and his uh, his voice for her is basically based off of his mom, um, okay. like him making fun of his mom, and um, because she has like a very New York accent, um, like a, a like a Long Island accent, and um, you want a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Like, um, but there is one particular. Um, like sketch that he did he released on youtube like ages ago before he was linda belcher well, like bob's burgers is like 10 years old at this point it's kind of horrifying to think about but like it's before from before that uh and it, it it's called the christmas tree and he's just like he he acts very similarly to like my mother-in-law so it's even funnier um so me and my wife uh, love playing it this time of year it's really funny and of course, um, there are the assortment of Christmas movies that uh, I, I like to watch around this time of year. My favorites are, you know, a lot of the same favorites everybody else has. But uh, I, I really love um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which I, I still really need to show you because I think you would have an appreciation of it for that one. Yeah, I've seen particular. the first, like, I don't know, 30 minutes of it. Because I think I'm going to mention this. It was in school, you know, shortly before we had winter break. So, like, we're, like, in health class or something. Like, what are we going to do? I don't know. So, we watched, like, the first part of the movie. Oh, well, okay, period's over. Bye. And, like, because that was just a free class, they, they weren't planning on showing us the whole movie. Like, we're going to we're gonna lose multiple classes on this. Like, that was it. That's all we saw. It's very annoying. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I like that one a lot. Uh, it, it probably has, like, some of the most, like, best, like, deadpan humor. Um, like I mean, I, I will say I still 
love that bit where he comes home with that gigantic tree that's completely impractical and the neighbor's like where are you gonna stick that thing and he goes bend over and i'll show you <laughs> amazing yeah and uh julia louis dreyfus is there oh my god uh yeah it's 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 a wonderful movie i really love it i, I love all the john hughes ones from that era um and that that one's certainly up there but uh i i like the Santa Claus, for what it's worth, it's a it's it's a lot shorter than I I remember it being as a child. What the, the Tim um, Allen movie? Yeah, the Tim Allen movie. I've seen bits. Yeah, um, I I went back and watched Jingle All the Way uh, last year. Uh, you know, as an adult, and that, I was that's like, a more ah, malicious that one movie went... than you may remember. Yeah, and and I like it up until the they they get into the super suits actually, um, but the super suits ruin it. It becomes I, really I actually I didn't mind point. the super suits, but <laughs> it's just that like you you have a working jetpack. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and also like real bombs in the mail. Um. Yeah. I, well. Uh, uh, and, and well, <laughs> even even the villain like Sinbad, the the character he dressed up as, whoever Turbo Man's villain is, he could shoot little discs. I could almost buy that actually being a thing. But like they're on a parade flow. They're not doing like like a bit. Like yeah. why? Why are these suits real? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, that that it, that's the point in the movie where I'm like, ah, no, nah, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, Home Alone one and two are absolute classics. Um, the second one is way more violent than you ever remember it being. If you haven't seen it in a long time, wait, the um, second what? The second Home Alone. Oh um, my god! For for okay, I I flaked for a second. I thought you meant there was a jingle all the way too. I'm like, no. Oh, there is one. Um, there is a jingle all the way too, but that's what? besides the point. Yeah, it, it, it was it was a WWE uh, production. So there's what um, the fuck? There's wrestlers in it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, there is a jingle all the way too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let me see if I uh, jingle all the way to no yeah. Jake Lloyd. I'm assuming. <laughs> well, yeah, no. Um, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Santino Morella, which I, I think is a yeah, he's a wrestler. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it was made by uh, WWE Studios. <laughs> that is shocking. <laughs> really funny <laughs> anyway home alone 2 yeah home for alone God's 2 sake. um he straight up throws a brick at them um and hits yeah them. that that like he, he like i don't know that how they did anybody. that but it looked like he hit a guy in the head with a brick yeah no that would it kill looks br- although I, I mean i will say that that was really nasty but i i gotta say though home alone 1 Stepping on the nail, I still can't look at that. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I have to. Like I saw that scene once, and I'm like, I will look away every single time. That, comes back. <laughs> that was so nasty. Uh, nobody can scream like Daniel Stern can. Let me tell you, yeah, he, um, he still got it too. Uh, yeah, I I, I love that. Like, uh, did, did did you see that video like, before Macaulay Culkin really kind of came back? Did Did you see that YouTube video he uploaded where like it was like McCa- Kevin McAllister as an adult, just being uh, weird and off-putting like have you seen that oh is that the the one the taxi cab one yeah um, like the yeah, uber driver yeah, gets like good. hijacked and he's like no you picked the wrong car like that one yeah yeah well that daniel stern good. did like a youtube video response to that where it was just him at his desk but he's like oh my god harry like i think the kid's coming ah! he, he's, he does the scream but like he, he's, he could still do it <laughs> i really thought you'd lose that after like 20 years but i guess not What's funny is, like, Daniel Stern used to be known as, like, the voice of, like, adult Kevin on, on The Wonder Years. <laughs> like, he was the guy who did, like, the, the voiceover. Uh, wow. Which is, it's so funny that, like, <laughs> he later did that, uh, yeah, of all he's things. The, he's the idiot villain in Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, um, you wonder why uh, Joe Pesci, uh, Pesci puts up with him at all, because he's, like, always screwing it up like the, the he's the one who like does the wet bandits thing you know like <laughs> yeah he he intentionally leaves a calling card <laughs> like everywhere they go <laughs> i love really at the very stupid. end where it's like uh remember uh, like and then home alone too remember now for the for the newspapers we are the sticky bandits s <laughs> t i i <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> Now, the second movie isn't as good as the first one, but it's still good. I like I, it I, just I, fine. I, I like it quite a bit still. And even though they redid some of the stuff in the first movie, 
But like, it, angel- it was kind of a play off of it, you know yeah, what angels I mean? Angels with filthy your souls, really? I mean, but I also love the whole that bit second with Tim Curry. Bro, that second one is still funny. Oh, you my was God. smooching everyone. <laughs> this little Joe with the gimpy leg. Yeah, little Mo with the gimpy leg. <laughs> Cliff. Mo. It's a lie. <laughs> Get on your knees and tell me you love me. The whole hotel <laughs> staff, I love you. It's so awkward. Tim Curry, oh my god. Rob Tim Snyder. Curry's like, it, it's funny because even though he's like doing what he can to prevent fraud, he's still malicious about it. <laughs> like he just grabs a little kid like, ah, I see you've paid for this with your stolen, stolen credit, credit card. card. <laughs> like if anybody was around, they'd be like, what the hell's your problem, Tim Curry? <laughs> he really has it out for this little like freaking eight nine-year-old kid god damn <laughs> yeah no I, I i i love those movies um and uh i i do um i do watch uh die hard i know you know there's always a debate of whether it's a christmas movie or not it it, it happens christmas it happens during christmas i don't care i like it um it's a great movie yeah i mean and home alone was sold as like die hard for kids so um like it, no it literally bullshit. He didn't. He didn't have to sneak into the building. Bullshit. Uh, 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 although uh, yeah, he actually kind of did for Home Alone too. I know it was supposed to be like his uncle's place or whatever, but that was an abandoned freaking apartment. Yeah, I mean, it. It. You can see the similarities the more you look at it. Um, no, kind of. Um, <laughs> like I, I sort of because with Die Hard it was more of an invasion, and with Home Alone it was more anti-invasion. It's like the improvising with you know bad guys around but yeah, in, in, in an enclosed battle plan space. yeah I, I i do like um muppets christmas carol quite a bit um it, it, it truncates uh the real story quite a bit but it's cute as hell and yeah. I oh love do, it. do they not have the part where michael kane dies and then scumbags <laughs> are like selling off the clothes off his back <laughs> that's fucking dark <laughs> yeah no that is dark um, i actually have not seen the muppet version but I've, I've read a christmas carol and i've seen like a play adaptation it, it's a really really good story i i recommend uh, i've i've seen the version with patrick stewart as scrooge and that that's quite good um oh that's uh, great because what's funny one. is that even in star trek he's like like a curmudgeon when it comes to kids sure yeah no he hates kids um you're, like you're a, absolutely like I'll, right i guess i'll put up with them uh, the line the line must be drawn here um <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, when he's teaching an art class the line must be drawn here it's amazing it's so stupid my absolute favorite uh ytmnd uh of all time I, it's it's, what, it's what so question. stupid that it's just funny <laughs> Captain Picard teaching an art class, and he's just adding the easel. The line must be drawn here, and that's it. <laughs> it's great. Which is a, a line from uh, First Contact, uh, but yeah, that's so dumb. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, make it so. Uh, like that's another Star Trek like you know thing that happens. That, this that year. was a Star Trek thing that I didn't know was a Star Trek thing. Like like in Warcraft Two, there were a bunch of push button well, push like typing codes that were star trek that i had no like i've never seen star trek so like make it so was a code uh it is a good day to die was a code and like i didn't know that those were like winks to tv show we like like i had no clue (laughs) for years yeah um let's see here uh you also have elf which is probably the best modern classic if i if i have to pick one i mean elf is old old by this point but the only um, thing i know about elf is you sit on a throne of lies <laughs> it's a good movie i mean it, it it was made by john favreau john favreau is a good uh really good um you know filmmaker so um, you know did you know that he uh is the original creator of the jungle book <laughs> you could tell because it's got his name on it <laughs> oh god uh, there's so much wrong with that uh, peter jackson's Rud- king kong wow R- rudyard kipling anyway um <laughs> what's a rudyard kipling it's john Farrow's jungle book Says it right in the name, Rudyard. <laughs> no other, uh, no other person named Rudyard. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anyone else. <laughs> there are some names like that where, like, they're the only one, or they're the only one we know of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, um, there are some other ones that everybody really loves, like uh, a Christmas story. I'm a little burnt out on at this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't watch it every year or anything, but like, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, uh, there, I like also, it too. It's a wonderful life, which is, I guess, what the previous generation. I like that one a lot. Out on, but I've only seen the movie like once, so fine, it's good. 
I, I like that one a lot. Um, Did you know that movie has Ernie and Bert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like uh, Ernie the cab driver and Bert the police officer. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, <laughs> kind of like a uh, Biggs and Wedge <laughs> in in Final Fantasy games. God, is that weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I first saw that, I think it was like an FF six, and I was like, no, like is that a localization thing? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, no. It's just they they uh-huh. like Star Wars. I mean, it, yeah, that's really it. <laughs> uh, like the the Bert, uh, like Frank Oz and 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 uh, Jim Henson liked you know um, oh, speaking of which how could we get the forget the star wars holiday special it wasn't christmas it was life day but it was christmas i mean uh you Carrie have Fisher to watch things in that one that's an advertisement like that's that's like that's like a thing to get you to watch it <laughs> you, have to, sings. you have to watch a youtube version of that uh, they they do have a portion of it on uh on disney plus but like which is shocking uh, but it's only the animated part, which is the only good part. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think literally anybody in the live action version, dead or alive, like wants that to be seen by anyone ever. <laughs> my 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 favorite um thing about that is uh like um Conan O'Brien like a long time ago on his original show had Harrison Ford on like right around Christmas time, and he he showed they he showed a clip of it. Like, that was clearly, like, off of, like, a bootleg. You well, because it had to have been. There is no official yeah, version. From, from like, you know, from a convention or something like yeah, that. Yeah, from, like, the 70s. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Somebody taped their TV in the 70s. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he showed a a a, uh, <laughs> a clip of it, and and uh, he said to Harrison Ford, you, you, you remember doing that? And Harrison Ford's like, N- n- no. <laughs> Well, but that's also really funny because it's like, where did you get this? But no, actually, my, my favorite part of the holiday special by a mile has got to be actually another part with Harrison Ford, with Han Solo, where, he, you, you know, they're on the Ewok, strangely, no, 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 the, no, this does make more sense. They're on the Wookiees, like, treehouse sure. things. Everything's like a million miles high. And there's that one stormtrooper who has a gun to Han Solo. And sure. Han Solo, like... It's like during jukes. the only action part of, of the entire thing. And even yeah. then it barely counts. But yeah, he, like, jukes toward, like, the railing. And the stormtrooper's like, oh! And he, like, follows suit. And, like, throws himself accidentally, like, yep. over the railing into his death. And all Harrison Ford did was, like, quickly shift to the side. That was the action <laughs> scene. <laughs> It's, it's so bad. The lone action scene. Of he just the goes like, oh, and like that takes a guy out. Like the guy takes himself out. It's. <laughs> I mean, amazing. he is a stormtrooper. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> what a stupid butt. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just love that stuff. Um, I this it's so stupid. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I. Th- those are really the things I. I mean, there's all of the other reindeer. <laughs> Um, I actually did, did, saw that when it came out. Um, I've yeah. never seen it around since. It's okay. I think it's made in part by Matt Groening. Yeah, and there's some uh, famous people in it, like uh, Drew Barrymore and Hank Azaria. Um, yeah, and I actually really like that the villain of the movie is a mailman because yeah. it's Christmas time and it is just a living nightmare to work at the post office during Christmas time. So he's like, fuck Christmas. And it's like, well, he's the bad guy, but like, I totally get it. <laughs> I, I like the backstory to the you know the the actual like book that they wrote for all of the other reindeer like m- most of all do you know the backstory i didn't even know there was a book oh, okay so this is based off of a book that a family wrote um okay and, uh, and it's okay. clever too because like it's a dog named olive yes and that like they said like oh no one of my reindeer is out of commission i'm gonna have to rely on all of the other reindeer to help us out and then olive's like oh is that me am i a reindeer well, there, there's a funny callback in that movie later where, like, a bus driver or, says, or something says, like, you know, I used to think the same kind of way you did. I used to think that the Pledge of Allegiance was dedicated to me, Richard Stans. Like, that, <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> it's the same kind of joke. But yeah. um, this was an actual um, thing. What, what happened was this family adopted a dog and, and renamed it, and they found that the dog would go crazy every time they would sing... Um, Rudolph the Road Nosed Reindeer at the house. Really? Uh, so whenever they said it said all of the other reindeer, the, the, the dog would just go nuts because they thought it, like the dog was finally being called by its rightful name. 
uh, oh, Olive so maybe his name actually was Olive or something? Uh, yeah, the dog's name was Olive before she was given away. Wow. Um, yeah, so... Um, That's great. It, it, so, like, it's literally named after a dog who, who they who they um, they found out her actual name is That's Olive. That's some connection. Um, by, by doing that. Uh, so, yeah, by actually, like, singing the, the song. So, like, the, the dog would just go nuts because, like, you know... It was like never being called by their name. Sure, sure. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, it's no chili and pepper, but you know we'll. <laughs> but what we'll, is really? We'll, we'll, we'll forget that. <laughs> it, it's funny that like this is funny to only me, you, and Perry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and my wife does know about it now, but like d- cannot like, appreciate <laughs> what what I did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like I tricked you into naming our pets after after the battle, battle monsters. monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Remember battle monsters? No, <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> uh, you, you, they really should uh, remaster that game. <laughs> yeah, they should. I want to hear more victory yells that are awkwardly <laughs> cut off. <laughs> But yeah, we we should move on to fan stuff. Uh, we we sure. we've dawdled enough. So, um, Living Corpse has a couple of comments. One, glad to see the game industry is unionizing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And another one, uh, just learned that Venus, the planet, can have hurricane force winds. Fuck this child's nightmare planet. <laughs> oh, Venus sucks. Uh, Venus yeah. is, like, worse than Mercury, if that's even possible. It's hotter than Mercury, which doesn't make sense, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's because all the heat's trapped under those gases. Yeah, greenhouse effect. Um, School Filmer says, Well, I did manage to go to one movie at the cinema this year. A Norwegian remake of a Czech movie from 1973. Oh, so I guess it's, like, a Czechoslovakian movie? <laughs> yeah, it would be Czechoslovakian. Um, uh, based point. on Cinderella. The originals usually aired on TV on Christmas Eve somewhere during noon. It's a tradition to many, even if the dubbing was just one guy acting out the script. Oh, God. While the original oh, wow. was in the background. <laughs> I've heard of stuff like that. That's crazy. Th- there's this one Russian person I talked to on Discord that said, like, that's how they watched Star Wars way back in the day, is a guy would, like... Read the hear whole the movie, lines yeah. of the movie and very quickly translate them like on the fly and just say it out loud in Russian. Like that's like that's that's like what you they got. would have a translator at the movie. Like just yeah, there's just it. like a guy who's like, uh, this is what they're saying. Like it's so awkward, but like it's all you got. Um, so I like the remake well enough though, and thankfully everyone has their own voices in this one. You know what I'm reminded? Of? Oh, oh, I'll finish the post. And I wrote how tough SMT5 was because I was stuck on the first boss. After fusing some demons with Bufu abilities, including Mermaid, I managed to beat it on the fourth attempt. I did that on casual, though. <laughs> I want to play Tales of Arise since it came out. and uh, I really want to play that. On... Hmm? I, I want to play Tales of Arise. That one's getting like all kinds of acclaim. Oh, yeah. And just before I forget, I don't want to screw this up because I believe this was said by somebody different, and I don't think I copied the name. So let me, let me get this right. I'm going to fix myself. There it is. I almost screwed it up, but I saved it. Sabrina Hengel You checked says, yourself, and you did not wreck yourself. I did not wreck. So, yeah, Sabrina Hengel says, I wanted to play Tales of Arise since it came out, and finally picked it up on Black Friday for 29 uh, euros. Obviously, I'm not finished yet, but so far I'm really enjoying it, and it might even surpass Berseria, which was my favorite in the series so far. Um, yeah, I've heard great things about Arise. But I, what, what I, I was going to say, It's so though, cheap, too. It's like 35 bucks if you want the PS4 version. Yeah. But what I was, was going to say regarding everyone having their own voices versus not is i remember i think we watched on youtube a long time ago uh it was do you remember the company like phoenix games that releases like crap shellware and like europe ps2 games oh yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. i remember there was like a peter pan storytelling game oh yeah Yeah. but it was just the one guy reading the lines but he wasn't even trying to do voices so it was like are you saying you can fly said wendy yes i can said peter that's incredible said wendy and it's it's super disorienting to hear (laughs) Wow. Um, so, question. Um, Ross sent us a bunch of questions. There are a bunch of, like, little things like this. You'll hear what I mean in a second. But he said it's stu- it's stuff that people would get asked at, like, inside the actor's studio. So it's a bunch of rapid-fire questions. <laughs> so I, I, have, uh, I have two here. What is your favorite word? What is your least favorite word? Hmm. I think I know your favorite word. I have no idea what your least favorite is, though. Well, uh, no, you know what my least favorite word is. 
Do I? Because I, I yes. was going to say your favorite is probably Defenestrate, right? It, that is 100% correct. What um, is favorite? I'm not, I don't know if I know this. Bourgeois. Oh, okay. That's a callback, though. That's like 15 years. But, you, yeah. But I do remember what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Bourgeois. Uh... Yeah, when, when it's used, like, not the way it means, or not, not the way it, like, its dictionary meaning is just like i don't like this it's so bourgeois it's like what that's so, not how so, you use that i i i don't like its fans it's it's just like a lot of things you know like it, yeah, well, it's not it, the it's actual kind of, word itself um, yeah it, it's kind of like me with literally like i'm yeah. cool with the word i'm not cool when it's used to mean the actual the literal opposite of what it means so i'm I, literally I, dying are you you want to call out the uh, the ambulance right now? <laughs> so, um, I, I guess I should explain both. Um, so oh, yeah, and my history with yeah. them, yeah. So, defen- defenestrate is like um a very specific verb. Um, and I when I found out about it, I really loved it. Yeah, I mean, it's funny it, because it's so specific. It's like there's a word for this. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is the the verb to throw something out of a window. Um, yes. So, um, first of all, when it was in common usage. You would throw out a lot of things out of out of a window. First of all, yeah, emptying um, your chamber pot out the window. Yeah, chamber pot is like the main thing uh, I could think of. But which is so fucking gross. Uh, yeah, but that that's also the reason why like men used to walk on a certain side. Um, I guess on the left side, you know, because like yeah, as far away, like close to the street, you're not gonna have to worry about getting run over by a horse drawn carriage. But yeah, that, you will that... have to worry about. Just random shit falling out of, literally, falling out of buildings. Yeah, yeah, which is disgusting. That's vile. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, no wonder people died of bubonic plague. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't imagine, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but like, um, yeah, just imagine, imagine walking down the street and ha- having to deal with that. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, so, also, it is a political term. I don't know if yes. you knew this about. Uh, so, no, so, I actually did. It was like named after somebody. It's it, not so, even like a word. It's a name that's become a word. Yeah. It, it, so, well, the 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 word defenestration literally just means literally means throw something out of a window because a fenster is a window. Um, but um, oh, so in German, in, in German, but um, uh, it, it pertains to a specific event where they threw like a duke or something like that yeah, out of a yeah. out of a window like uh, be, you know as an insurrection kind of thing okay because um, I, I, w- I was thinking it might have been like a molotov cocktail where molotov was named after some russian like i forgot what like a minister or something yeah no it, th- this was this was a very specific instance where they threw a politician out of a window okay um w- which is funny by the way it's little things like this that if you really care about it can break immersion like Bloodborne has Molotov cocktails. Oh, does that Russian guy exist in this universe? Like it's Dark like Souls Einstein 3. in uh in, in Star Fox sixty four. Star Fox or yeah. Dark Souls three has books that can only be read in Braille. And I'm like, oh, there's another. There's, there's a guy named Braille who invented a language called <laughs> the Braille. Dewey Decimal it's System. <laughs> incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, a guy named Dewey. Um, yeah. Yep. But uh, I should explain uh, bourgeois. So, um, like when we were in 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 grad school, um. I had just noticed yes. this, like this, this, ter- this term was going around where people who wanted to sound like they were smart would say it. I, about- I actually remember like the exact event you're describing, which is amazing. <laughs> so, so people were starting to use it as um, not what it actually means, which is like. Um, you know, comparing it to, like, the mercantile class, uh, of... Yeah, and, like, the bourgeoisie, like, the middle class. Yeah, uh, and, and their, their lackadaisical, um, attitude towards, you know, life and, and, and how hard it is to be poor. Um, so, uh, people started using it for, like... I don't like this. Like, like this. Yeah, exactly. this is, you know, this you know is... what it's like. It's it's like a it's like a less offensive version of like in middle school when you Sucks. don't like something. Yeah. Oh, that's so gay. It's yeah. like that's not what that means. <laughs> so so people started to use it to sound like they were smarter than they actually were. And if you were actually smart, you would you would know what the word meant and how to use it correctly. Yeah, the historical uh, context. I mean, I'm not asking you to do research, but like. It's clearly not an American English word like bourgeois. Like, what, like that's that's gotta come from somewhere. <laughs> so, so I I went on this big long rant like earlier in the year, 
and uh, to to uh, you and my, our, our friend Mike, who we hung yeah. out with every, at, at the end of every cl- class week, um, and and just like gamed into the wee hours of the night, and on our very last day of. <laughs> yeah, it was the last day. Wasn't it was the very oh, of last it was, day because I remember what the sentence was uh, of of school that year. Uh, uh, we were in the same room. All all three of us were in the same room with this other girl who had received her final yes. paper, yes, and she's yes, like, yes, yes. "Oh, this grade is so bourgeois." Yeah, she really got this bourgeois grade. Yeah, <laughs> and and, and we like, I looked at both of you, and you were like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like yeah. you're right. <laughs> yeah, there was something about this bourgeois grade. <laughs> Like no, Vice is Vice actually has a point. <laughs> like, hold me back, hold me back. <laughs> so um, yeah, that that was the story behind that. And uh, if I had to pick a word that that was my least favorite, uh, that would that would be it. You're just sick of it. <laughs> no, it's just like you know, like you, you obviously can't. Um, you, you you aren't responsible with it, so you can't have it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. Like they started thing. throwing around like the proletariat. It's like, well, <laughs> um, now now people use it to mean like like the middle class problems, you know, kind of thing. It's a little bit better than it than it used to be, where because people just say bougie now. But like, it's like I'm I'm drinking my bougie uh, pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, which um, like yeah, like it's a little bit I, better. I get it. It's a little bit better. It's like first like, world problems. Kind yeah, of thing. first world problems kind of thing. So it's a little closer, um, but it, it's not used the same way that it was like back then. That yeah, pissed yeah. me off. But it, it's still not the best. But it's better, I guess. <laughs> but uh, how about you, Lotus? Uh, you... Um, ah, there's a chance I might have mentioned this before. I don't know if it's my favorite word. I have a very difficult time locking down favorites sure but um i i do rather like just vex there's something oh, okay. about it maybe it's because i grew up in the radical 90s where everything was x's and z's <laughs> x's like, and z's i, I kind of like to vex. the max like oh i'm so vexed right now the only thing that bugs me a little bit though is i i guess you could do this like i'm so angry this is so vexing but like i think technically the right word is vexatious which does not sound as fun to me mm. but i do like saying like oh this vexes me i mean like, i don't actually talk like that but I, I just like the sound of the word though i'm so vexed um uh another word uh i i hate to interrupt you for for least yeah, favorite. Like, that's pretty much it go ahead <laughs> oh okay i don't know if you have a least favorite do you have a least favorite i don't think so i mean like if if you if you want to go in the bourgeois direction, then maybe literally, like I mentioned. No, oh, okay, yeah. There for just go. for the sound of it, though, like I don't know if I have one. I mean, there's the classic like internet words that make you cringe, like moist, moist and yeah. stuff like that. Or what was the other one? Us. Like phlegm. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> nah, that doesn't bother me. Maybe like supple. Oh, uh, yes. Because like, there's only certain contexts where you use that word. Yeah, supple. And outside of tree Ugh. branches, it's just like a little weird to me. Yeah. yeah. But, and what were you gonna say? I was gonna say I I don't know whether this this uh, counts as like a favorite or worst because it's kind of like I I have an appreciation for how bad badly we've treated it over the years. Okay. Um. But uh, inflammable, uh, which literally means oh, yeah. both extremes at the same time. Uh, it literally yeah. means something that is flammable and something that is not flammable. Well, well this was a time. case where the real word was bad. And yeah. the the flawed derivative is better because inflammable was supposed to mean that something can become inflamed. Yeah. Uh, there there was no such word as flammable. Inflammable meant it could catch on fire. But in in front of every goddamn other word means not. So yes. oh, inflammable means not flammable, and they were wrong, but they're right now because they use the word that way endlessly. So it's literally a useless word because it tells you nothing now. Um, S- speaking of which, speaking of useless words that tell you nothing, um, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, yeah, that's another one, yeah. Because they're ambiguous. Yeah. Because does bi-weekly mean twice a week or does it mean once every two weeks? Um, it, it, dictionary it, it, says yes. It's useless. <laughs> to both. Yeah, it's You have it's to useless. ask so no one uses it. Yeah, it's it's like um the like a bi monthly comic. Does it come out twice a month or every yeah, two same months? Thing. I, yeah, I, twice a month or once every two months. I don't know. Yeah, and you're, they you're do have bi monthly comics. How much are you paying for? One thing or four times the amount? I don't know. Usually bi monthly comics nowadays mean uh like twice a month, I think. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Oh by the way, one other word I'll say that I like 
just because it's fun when you get the opportunity to bring it up is penultimate which <laughs> yeah, means that's a good second one. to last yeah yeah that's a good sometimes one. I, there there was a point where i think people used it to mean last like it's it's like a cooler version of the word ultimate but like no it isn't <laughs> it yeah means second to last uh another word i i dislike is be- because um like the amount of misuse of it is really frightening okay um the word prequel um is used oh improperly yeah, yeah a people lot. think that it comes before and that's it but like no it was made after and comes before. yeah it's a it's a portmanteau which is another favorite word of mine uh a portmanteau of yeah i like the word portmanteau actually. Uh, of of predecessor and sequel um so like it predecessor is what it's you know, what a lot of people mess up with uh, well, I, like, I remember to this day i was at a convention and i found like chrono trigger ps1 and it says it's the prequel of chrono cross and i'm like no it isn't yeah, it's the predecessor. It's the predecessor. Yeah. It came first. Yeah, it's like uh, I I heard that about Pitch Black being the pre uh, the prequel to um, uh, Chronicles of Riddick. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's nope. the predecessor. And you know what really gets fun though is when you have a trilogy of trilogies, like Star Wars. Yeah, like Episode Three is a prequel to Episode Four, um, but Episode Two is not a prequel to Episode Three. <laughs> uh, that is true. <laughs> episode Three is a sequel to Episode Two. Episode four is not a sequel to episode three. So we'll, we'll we'll clarify here for people that aren't catching on. Um, so a predecessor is the the one that is actually created first, um, and then and then a sequel happens. It, it, this the second one is the sequel. Well, a prequel is a is a title that was made later than its original uh, incarnation, but tells a story before it. Um, so you know what gets fun, by the way? <laughs> the pre-sequel. <laughs> well, that's just being cute. But you, yeah. you know what gets fun is uh, Yakuza. Uh, oh, yeah. Ya- Yakuza 0, specifically. Yakuza 1 is not a sequel. Yakuza Kiwami 1, I guess you could say is, even though it's a remake. So it gets even more confusing. <laughs> oh, you, you, know what, you know what the most fun, though, I think is? What's that? The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Lord of the Rings is a sequel to The Hobbit <laughs> in book form. <laughs> Uh, the Hobbit is not a prequel. The Hobbit is a prequel in movie form. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is it's not true. a sequel in movie form, which is really stupid. They should have made they should have made a single Hobbit movie as as part of a quadrilogy. Um, yeah. But you know they they made a bloated trilogy instead. Uh, yep, yep. Afterwards, well, I, th- so. I think the intent was to make two movies. But then they made three. It, it doesn't deserve two movies either. Um, yeah, it, well, yeah, that's it deserves one. Like, the book goes into more, like, narrative detail than you might think, but the actual adventure is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, no, it, it it's not complicated. Um, like, The Lord of the Rings deserves to be three movies, and it deserves to be three books, even though it's one book. Um, but, like, it, it, it's, it, yeah, The Hobbit is worth it one, one, one movie. It really yep, is. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I, I think we, we, we did a lot there. I mean, like, uh, I mean, this is all, like, for fun. I, I, I don't have an actual, like, most hated word. Oh, this is a dastardly word. Yeah, I you get know, mad like, every time I hear this word. Yeah, no, not really. Exactly. But, uh, you know, I don't I don't have an actual favorite oh, but, but word speaking anymore. Speaking of which, I, I think I just heard you say it, but I do rather enjoy dastardly because it's so <laughs> corny. Um, we, We've brought this up before. Dervish is a fun word because, like, what the hell does that mean when if it's not whirling? Um, yeah, well, I mentioned that when, when I went to, like, when you lived at your parents' house. I mentioned that once where, like, I was talking to your dad about this. I mentioned it briefly because your dad was there before you came downstairs. And you come down and I'm like, hey, Vice, have you ever heard of a regular dervish? And you're just like, what? <laughs> that's like, the first thing I said to you after driving an hour to get to your place. <laughs> but it's true. Like, it, what's a dervish if it's not whirling? I, well, I don't speaking know. Speaking of which, uh, another word I think you like for the same reason is uh, not over or under, but just regular whelmed. Yeah. <laughs> Which is an antiquated word, but it means yeah, the same thing as about over, the effect on me that I expected that I'm whelmed. Yeah. <laughs> or same goes for kempt, the opposite of unkempt. Or uh, vincible, the opposite of invincible. Yes, or, that is a word. If something is vulnerable, it is vincible. Or, or canny, uh, instead of uncanny. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, you know what I also kind of like, by the way? Is uh, without, as in the opposite of within. Oh yeah, like I'm leaving. I'm gonna be without the room. Uh, yeah, nobody says that. It's um, so well, yeah. You'll read in like Shakespeare, maybe. Yeah, like they're nobody, attacking nobody from without. That. Yeah. 
No, nobody says that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I kind of hate whom because, like, only people that try to correct you are the people that use it. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's annoying because I, I teach, like, SAT prep. And sure. every so often they might call you on that. So, like, it's it's annoying because the rules for who and whom are very simple. But nobody, nobody knows them, them because nobody yeah. ever, 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 ever says whom ever. So, like, it's something that everybody should know, but nobody ever uses it, so actually, no, they shouldn't know it. But then all of a sudden, they're tested on it when they're, like, 15, and it's like, what the f- come on. Yeah, it's like a lot of proper um, English uh, rules that are only used in, in like, yeah, for te- paper for, space. For antiquated tests. Like, yeah. the SAT has evolved greatly since we've taken it, but they still fall back on some of that old fogey stuff like gram- grammar um like gr- when grammar I, like uh like when i when i want to refer to a singular person and i don't know what sex they are we'll say his or her like that that's clunky as hell everybody like, no just uses just, they just now. say there who gives a shit yeah, they are there or them whatever yeah, they they're them yeah yep 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 i mean it's you know nope nobody like, talks his or like her that is just for... bad writing like he or she forgot his or her car keys so he or she had to go get in his or her car like nobody's doing that <laughs> Uh, most English scholars at this point will acknowledge that the 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 rules are only set by people who wanted rules. Um, but but not only that, singular they is like I forgot the amount, but I I want to say off the top of my head like seven hundred years old. Oh, it's yeah. been a thing. Shut the fuck up. No, well, yeah, I'm not I'm not even getting on that. But um, what what I'm trying to say is that. As long as people understand what you're saying, then you are commanding yeah, the much. language properly. Yeah, you only really run into an actual problem if it's like the bi-weekly stuff where you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, the, 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 the there there are... Even spellings are like set by somebody who wanted standardized spellings. Like, you, you know what well, I mean? Well, well not, not only that, but some of our spelling is awkward and you're like, why are words spelled that way? Oh, I'll tell you why. French. The French... <laughs> well, I, well, I'll take it. I, I was going to say Middle English, but that's like I, I mean, Middle English enough. is because the French. Took yeah, it's just yeah. Took so, over like, England. like uh, I always bring up this example, like a knight in shining armor. Really, there's a K, there's a G H. Knicked. Like, yeah, knicked. Like it, it made perfect <laughs> sense at the time. Yeah. But we we can't just change the spelling of a word. That's weird. Instead, we'll just change the pronunciation and confuse everybody. <laughs> well, I presumably people wrote th- things down a lot less back back at the time and they did. Um yeah. so like people Nobody didn't could read back then. Right? Yeah, people people weren't like very literate until we yeah, literacy we had... was like what like a third. Yeah, I mean, like, rich people could write, right? Yeah, the like, clergy. Well, that, that's why you went to church, by the way, is because you did not know what the Bible said, and you had to trust that what the pastor said was true. Well, not not only that, but it was it was read in in Latin. <laughs> that, oh, that's a good point. It wasn't... It wasn't... Yeah, it, yeah, it, wasn't language barrier. <laughs> it wasn't read in English until, uh, like, the 1900s, um, mm-hmm. really. Um, like, it... it, it it, it in Amer in America it was done in English, but like uh, except the Catholic uh, Catholics did not give that up until uh, probably in the nineteen sixties, mm-hmm. um, which is well. Kind I mean, of funny. well, e- even in even in schools, like I don't know if my parents did it, but my grandparents probably would have. But there'd be like you know copy down these Greek and or Latin phrases from the board, and like there was still a bit of holding onto that. Yeah, um, the classics. <laughs> were, were something that never died you know it was just one of those e- things even in college i don't know about you did you take chaucer oh yeah i took chaucer yeah did they have you read it they had us they read had, it in middle english in middle english ridiculous. yeah like you better believe ridiculous. about a fucking modern english version uh, it, i understand what they're getting at because they want you to um like experience the um well, yeah, like, well, it, it's a the poem. verse, like yeah, the verse. But... Yeah, like it, it actually. There are certain things that actually do come off better the way they were originally intended. It, well, it's like if it's like if you read the Inferno or the Odyssey, those are poems. But I'm not going to teach myself get that. I, I'm not going to teach myself Italian, like Middle English. Well, uh, well, that's what I'm saying. But like middle those are Italian. poems, and you just won't get it if it's like in English. Like you're yeah. you're missing a dynamic of the thing. But at the same time, like. I, I want to know what the fuck it says. Let me just read it in English. Yeah, I mean... The, the, I'll, I'll, I'll follow the footnotes that explain what I'm missing. Thank you. Also, like, you, you, why not just, like, give us, like, 
two columns, you know, where I can I can read the verse, but I'll also I can understand it over here because like yeah, uh, I mean uh, to to to, to Middle be English fair, is so different; it might as well be another language. Well, no, I, I was actually just going to go into that. That I disagree. Um, I would say Old English is incomprehensible. Uh, Middle English is like Modern English, but with like a code. Like, if you read it and you're like, wait a second, yeah. if I replace this letter with that letter, then it suddenly makes sense. Uh, what what sounds different is when you hear it spoken out loud. That is disorienting. But if you read it, you, you can see where it's coming from. But Old English, you don't have a chance. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Like if you By read the way, Beowulf... uh, listeners, here's a question. <laughs> Shakespeare, Old, Middle, Modern English... Three, two, one. Okay, thanks for guessing. Modern. Thanks, what is it? <laughs> modern. How it do is... you know it's modern? Because you have a chance of understanding it. it. It's the start of modern English. Yeah. I mean, I just said Middle English, you have a chance, but like Shakespeare, you can immediately read the words and know what they mean. There might be some old timey phrases, but the fact that you could just read it, it's modern. <laughs> yeah. Um, he he died the same day as uh, Cervantes. No kidding. Yeah, of and Don Cervantes Quixote. wrote possibly the world's first like, like novel, like book in novel form. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say Don Quixote. Um, I mean, there's Utopia. But I, I, that that's kind of a novel, I guess. Uh, I don't know that one actually. Yeah. Oh, sp- speaking of Don Quixote, there's another thing where he would use. This is something that I didn't get because I'm not reading this in fucking Spanish. But Don Quixote himself would speak, like, Castilian Spanish, which oh, is, I yeah. guess, a more, like, hoity-toity version of it, because he's Mr. Noble Knight. So they tried playing with that in the, the English translation I read, where he would use, like, pretentious words. Like, instead of saying, shower me with praise, he would say, like, shower me with, like, encomiums. Which, by the way, that, that's another word I like quite a bit, because it's so absurd. That, that's the only word that I've ever heard. Uh, that I've only ever heard that word from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was actually just going to mention, that's a word Perry likes, because it's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Like, oh, you did a great job. You deserve some encomiums. Like, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> it's like persnickety. Like, who, who uses that word? Yeah, uh, like, I, I also kind of like that word. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who, who uses that? Uh, like, I, I once had, like, I was preparing for an interview, and I was like, ah, I'm pretty persnickety, and, and he's just like, never say that word ever again yeah. during an interview. <laughs> Vice, you're, you're, you're so late to work. Stop being such a laggard. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh... there are certain words where it's just like really, you're such a ne'er do well. <laughs> yeah, it makes you sound like you're you're from from like a 1930s comic, like like yeah. like comic book. <laughs> I'm not gonna tolerate these rap scallions no more. <laughs> what a knee slapper. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> why don't we wrap things up unless you have mm. anything uh, substantiated. Uh, substantial uh that is the show for this week we want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions that was a good one and you got us going because we were we are english people um, we sure are <laughs> please not to keep be confused us... with english people we are english majors no we're not english men we are english majors um <laughs> <laughs> uh, please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting questions of your own via the youtube and soundcloud pages while there please give us thumbs ups likes and five star ratings on itunes it helps promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going you can also catch us on tuesdays for our sister podcast reactor consciousness the in-depth look at this week in our lives finally you can fri- uh, friend me as vise the bold on pretty much anything just give me a heads up let me know who you are and you can follow me on my youtube channel lotus prince you can hit me up on twitter at at lotus prince and finally if you are interested in seeing my videos early getting in on exclusive live streams selecting upcoming games for me to let's play or getting in conversations with me and other patrons on discord then perhaps consider swinging by my patreon account which can be found at patreon.com slash lotus prince all right everyone we will catch you on tuesday then Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.